But I put it up there because the Spanish, they tell a story about a father and a son. Well, they, they have a rough relationship and they become estranged. So much so that the, the son leaves home. And the father doesn't hear from him for years. So eventually the father, he goes looking for his son. And he spends months trying to track down his son, find his son. Just no success. And so finally, out of desperation, the, the father takes out an ad in the local paper. And the ad says, Dear Paco, meet me in front of this newspaper office at noon on Saturday. All is forgiven. I love you. Your father. You know, on that Saturday, 800 men named Paco showed up looking for love from their fathers. Looking for forgiveness from their fathers. Yeah, and that's, like, that's one of those stories. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a story they tell in Spain. And you shake your head like, oh, that's how powerful this idea, though, of, is of, of being forgiven. Someone saying to you, I forgive you. And it's probably about 800 people will come out looking for it. You know, in, in this world we live in, this idea of forgiving others, it's essential for us to have close relationships, to maintain them, uh, to, to be healthy in them. And in that, we need forgiveness, and we need to be able to offer forgiveness. We need forgiveness because well, the Bible says we've all messed up. We know how we've messed up. But, but we all need to be able to grant forgiveness because, hey, maybe more than anything else, we know how much other people have messed up, right? Oh, you, let me tell you about him and her and him, right? And we, and we know they've messed up and they've hurt themselves and they've hurt us. So we need to be able to forgive. But, but hey, being the one to grant that forgiveness, it's not an easy task, is it? I mean, it's not easy. The words I forgive you. Those are difficult words. And that's kind of how it fits into our sermon series here as we've been talking about difficult words. Things we have trouble saying because we have trouble getting our hearts to the place they need to be in order to say them. But perhaps the most difficult words in the English language are I forgive you. So let's be honest. Many, probably most, if not all of us, we have a list of people, don't we? We might not have a physical list, but we, got, we, can, we, we can tick off the names of people in the back of our heads, right? People who have hurt us, people who have wronged us, people who have some way betrayed us, they've hurt us. All people who could probably benefit from hearing those difficult words from us. I forgive you. And we know we have that list. And we also know, as followers of Jesus, we're supposed to forgive we know it, but I forgive you. The, those are such difficult words. Now, difficult words are not. This idea of forgiving other people, for a follower of Jesus, it's not optional. Not optional. You know, there, there, there are a lot of things in our following after Jesus we think are optional, right? Uh, isn't that true? I mean, we get, get pretty good at pretending things are optional. So I can pick and choose of what Jesus said, what I'm going to do, and how I'm going to do it, and when I'm going to do it. And so, uh, eventually, opting not to do what Jesus has instructed, well, it, it becomes natural to us. It's not a big deal. We get used to foregoing the option. And forgiveness is one of those things that we like to pretend is optional, right? And we, but we get pretty good at holding grudges and at harboring bitterness and at hardening our hearts. So opting not to forgive, that becomes natural. It just seems like, oh, you know, forgive me, I don't need to do that, right? And really life's okay. That's go, uh, I'm still okay with God because look, I can come to church, I can be with God and then not forgiving and we're all okay, but no. Forgiving others, not optional. If you follow Jesus, it all becomes clear when, when you see this. Jim, show us. Matthew 6.15, it's Jesus talking. He's talking, this is what you, uh, you want to follow me? Here's what it means. But if you do not forgive others their sins, uh, your Father will not forgive your sins. Wow, and that one hits close, doesn't it? Now, now this is personal. This, this, this actually means something to us. Because we have Jesus, Jesus here telling us how right. Hey, if, if you can't forgive other people in the ways they've messed up, your Father in Heaven, well, He's not going to forgive you for the ways you messed up. And this scares us because like we all know we've messed up. We all know we need God's forgiveness. But, but Jesus makes it clear here that part of following him, part of being in relationship with God through grace in Christ, means that we learn to forgive other people. 
if we're really serious about this Jesus stuff, we're really serious about the Christ, uh, about uh, uh, putting our faith in Jesus as our master and our savior, and we're really serious about following after him for the forgiveness of sins and, and that gift of eternal life, we're really serious about Jesus, then we must be people who are also serious uh, about learning and living to forgive. I mean, it's part of the salvation Christ died to bring us. It's all part of that. It's wonderful. As followers of Christ, we are empowered. No, we, we, we are just empowered to live as Christ lived. And how did Christ live? He lived forgiving others. That was his story. Those difficult words, I forgive you, they must be familiar words if we're going to join Jesus in his story. Because get this, the story is Jesus' story. The story, life, it's not about us. It's not about us at all. We hate thinking that way, don't we? We, we tend to think the story's about us, don't we? And, and so it's my life, my story. I'm going to go to church. I'm, I'm going to you know, seek God. I'm going to get God in my story. I'm going I'm to get God in my story. That's good. I must be doing good. God, God, come join me in what I'm doing. I'm doing pretty good because I got God in my story. No, the story, only and always, is about Christ. It's not about us. From the beginning to the end of eternity, it's Jesus' story. What is Christ doing in this world? You know, the story's about Jesus and not about us. And so the question can't be, how do I get God involved in my story? The question is, how do I get involved in Christ's story? How do I step into that? If we're going to join in Christ's story, the story it's the only story worthwhile. But if we're going to join it, then we've got to get over ourselves. Remember, it's not our story. And so it can no longer be about, well, you know what she did to me, so you don't expect me to forgive her. Or, or how, how, no, 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 I will not let him off the hook for what he said. Right? But you know what that is? That's us making the story about ourselves. If we want to join Christ's story, we have to be people who are increasingly saying, you are forgiven. All is forgiven. I forgive you. Because that's the story of Christ. I mean, that's what, that's what Jesus' story is. Let's peek in on just part of Christ's story that we have recorded for us in the Gospels. Let's look in on some dramatic things happening in the life of Christ, the story of Christ, and Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, we see Jesus being taken to Golgotha to be killed by crucifixion. Now, we know at this point of Jesus' story, he's done nothing wrong. He, he's not done anything wrong. He's committed no crime. He's committed no sin. Not against the Roman rulers who are taking him to be crucified. Not against any of the people. Not even against God himself. Jesus, perfectly innocent. Perfectly perfect. And yet they take him to Golgotha. We're, we're told, how's this for getting gory? We're called, it's told the place of the skull. That's where they take him. And they crucify him. They don't just crucify him, but they crucify him between two criminals. You know, Aha, this is what you are, right there. You know, all three of you, you're criminals. They nail his hands and his feet to the cross, and they leave him to hang there to asphyxiate and die. How gruesome. And while they're doing this, while these people are carrying out this brutal death sentence against him, an innocent man... Well, we see Jesus out of these words. Jim shows, we know these words, right? Luke 23, 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. You're forgiven. This is Jesus' story. That's what it's all about. And we see in this story that there's no excuse for us not to forgive other people because Jesus uttered these words of forgiveness about the men who crucified him as they were crucifying him guaranteed whatever reason you have in your life that makes it difficult to say the words you are forgiven to somebody. Jesus' experience here, it's infinitely more difficult. And yet he says these words. This is the story of Christ. We are called to by faith. If Jesus says these words, then to join him in his story, we need to be saying these words. I forgive you. Because, get this, not only did Jesus say these words, he means these words. 
let's be honest, sometimes things that are difficult to say, well, they're not difficult because we can say them without really meaning them, right? You know, we talked last week how sometimes kids, we tell them to say they're sorry and they're like, I'm sorry, right? We don't mean words. We can do the same thing with, with the words, you are forgiven. But that's why the words have so much power when Jesus utters them, utters them from the cross. Well, hanging on the cross while being crucified, when every breath, every word you speak is an effort, it is a battle, it is a war. You, if you're going to say anything, you mean those words. Jesus says it, and he mean, means it. You know, some of you might have heard of Henri Nguyen, even though he, he's a Catholic author. Am I going to talk about a Catholic author in our Baptist church? Yes, I am. Um, he's a Catholic author, and he's written uh, quite a few books and, and articles that are more devotional in nature, more meditative. And I've actually read a couple of his things, but I want you to listen to something he wrote in his book, The Return of the Prodigal Son. I have often said, I forgive you, but even as I said these words, my heart remained angry or resentful. I still wanted to hear the story that tells me that I was right after all. I still wanted to hear apologies and excuses. I still wanted a satisfaction of receiving some praise in return, of only the praise of being so forgiven. Now, we got familiar stuff here, isn't it? Most of us could have written this. Because isn't this how a lot of times we forgive? We say, I forgive you, but we hold on to that anger. We hold on to that resentment. And we want recognition then for being the one who's generous enough to forgive. And we expect other people to fully admit their guilt and to fall over themselves recognizing us and how great we are. You know what that is? That's saying, I forgive you, without really meaning it. That's us once more making the story about us. But the story is about Christ. If we want to join this eternal story, we must forgive. Not only say, I forgive you, but we have to really mean it. We don't hold on to any of those other things when we say, I forgive you. Because that's the story Christ showed us. How to live, you know, we we read this encounter on the cross, and he's showing us. He's showing us how to do it. Because if Christ can mean, I forgive you, forgive them, if he can mean that from the cross then certainly we can mean it in the lesser situations. And all our situations are lesser. Now let me clarify. When I say our situations are lesser, I don't mean they're easy. I don't mean they're painless. I don't mean we haven't been hurt by other people. Some of you have been hurt so badly and deeply by other people that if you explain to us what you were hurt by, we would say, well, that, that's unthinkable. We might even use the term and say, that's unforgivable. You've been hurt deeply. And so maybe you've been hurting for a long, long time. The pain is real. The hurt is real. Jesus knows it. He sees it. He cares for you in that pain and that hurt. And from the cross, Jesus beckons you to join his story of forgiveness. Because it's Jesus, he's dying on that cross to take away all your hurt and pain. It's it's not just about, hey, I'm going to be forgiven for my sins. Jesus says, ultimately, the cross is about taking away all your hurt, all your pain. And so he calls you to join his story. To be set free in forgiveness within his story. He calls you to say of those who have hurt you, Father, forgive them. I forgive you. So in doing so, he calls you to enter his healing presence as you join him in his story. See, when Jesus says from the cross, Father, forgive them, he's not only inviting us into his story, he's including us in his story. Whether we want to be in that story or not, he he includes us, He, he draws us in. Because it seems to me, Jesus isn't only speaking of the Roman soldiers there who are nailing him to that cross. Right? Because it wasn't the Romans who put Jesus on the cross. Jesus makes it very clear in Scripture that, that all he has to say is say the word and a legion. Thousands of angels are going to come and they're going to fight for him and they're going to send him for him. They're going to get him out of there. All he's got to do is say it. See, it wasn't the Romans that put Jesus on that cross. We know. What put Jesus on the cross? The sins of the world put Jesus on that cross. Jesus stayed on that cross to pay the penalty for the sins of the world. It, it means my sins put Jesus on the cross. Your sins put Jesus on that cross. 
So when Jesus utters from the cross, Father, forgive them. He's including you and me in that phrase. He's including us in his story. And from the cross, Jesus says, I forgive you. Difficult words. So, I, I, I say all that, the point out is, that what's going on when, when we fail or we refuse to forgive others? What's going on is that we're actually failing to recognize just how deeply we have been forgiven by Jesus and his death on the cross. We are failing to recognize the steep cost God paid so that he could say, I forgive you to me, to you. Look how the Apostle Paul puts it. Jim, will you show us in Colossians 3.13? Forgive. A command. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. We forgive others because we have forgiven, been forgiven. And we have been forgiven deeply by our God. And I don't think we can ever experience the full joy of forgiveness we have from God the Father through Jesus Christ while we are refusing to forgive other people. Because refusing to forgive others, that's us saying, I'm going to go down and I'm going to write my own story. But when we say, I forgive you, that's a doorway. That's a doorway Jesus gives us to enter into his story. A story where we experience forgiveness to its utmost glory. See, we can step into Christ's story through forgiving others, or we can remain in our story of unforgiveness, or our story of embittered, hardened hearts. And that's an ugly place. You know, I've had that in my life, and I've been there. And why do we want to stay there? It's a bad place to be. All we're doing is hurting ourselves. We fail to forgive, we hurt ourselves. And Robert Harvey and David Benner in their book about, entitled Understanding Forgiveness, they talk about how we hurt ourselves when we refuse to forgive other people. And, and to help us understand, they suggest this idea, I'm making a fist, and holding, everyone make a fist, and hold it tight, as tight as you can, clench it. Keep going, you know, or you can let it go. But imagine, if you did that after about one minute, as tight as you can, for a whole minute, you'd start feeling discomfort. After just one minute. But imagine now, you hold your fist with that tension for weeks, months, years, decades. What's going to happen? That's going to be outright pain. It's, it's going to become an unhealthy part of your body, and it's going to make misery in your entire existence. You see, it's a metaphor for when we hold on to things instead of forgiving, instead of letting them go. You know, um, when you refuse to forgive, you might actually hurt somebody. You, you can get back at them, right? By not forgiving them. And that might give you some, some, some personal satisfaction. Just, uh, I'm getting back at them in some way. But almost without exception, the pain of that clenched resentment that you hold in you, it's much worse to your soul. It's this self-inflicted paralysis that affects your entire life. It affects you, your entire story. Your entire story is poisoned. See, when someone wrongs us, and therefore we are given the opportunity to forgive, to say, I forgive you, that's actually Christ inviting us to join him in his story. No story could be greater. Just so often we're just concerned about my story. But next to the story of Christ, next to the story of eternity, our stories, they're pointless, they're puny. They're nothing. So Jesus says, come into my story. This is the greatest story. And he calls us into it by calling us to forgive other people. The question for us all today, who do you need to forgive today? Right? To whom do you need to speak those difficult words, I forgive you? And maybe you can't actually speak those words, but who do you need to, at least in your mind, speak those words to, I forgive you? Where is your heart hardened? Next to whom are you failing to recognize just how deeply you have needed forgiveness and received forgiveness? To whom do you need to go and say, I forgive you? So, so that you can join Christ more closely in his story of eternity. He says, see, through grace, 
in Christ in Jesus. Faith, we're with Jesus. But this is about, hey, how can we join him more closely in his story? You know, in a few moments, we together are going to celebrate the ordinance of Holy Communion. And, and it's a wonderful time. I look forward to it when we do it together. I hope you do too. But we're going to come and we're going to offer up to God our, our prayers. We're going to offer up our confessions. And then we're going to come to the table and we're going to partake uh, uh, of the bread. We're going to take the cup. Both vivid symbols uh, of the high price Jesus paid to purchase us from our sin. The high price Jesus paid so God could come to us and say, you are forgiven. I forgive you. See, the whole purpose of communion is to invite us by remembering further into the story of Christ for all eternity. But today, I say, communion, it's not going to be our only inroad to Christ's story today. Today, let's join Christ as we forgive others. Today, Jesus invites us to know him and the power of his death and resurrection in greater ways by saying to others, I forgive you. Those were, I forgive you. Difficult words? Not so much when we say them alongside our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, go forth in the story of Christ, saying to others, I forgive you. Just like my Lord Jesus. Let's pray.